Tony, um, you wanted to build on the Florida State win. Were you happy with what you saw tonight? Yeah, I thought we came out the right way. Um, you know, it's pretty simple. I, I told the guys, you've got the formula for how you got to play. It doesn't guarantee you're going to be successful every time. No, but um, they they guard it. The, we guard it the right way. Um, Forrest and Wake Forest, they had some careless turnovers right away, Wake Forest did, which helped us. Um, but but we were in the right spots and made them shoot the contested shots. And then, again, we ran our offense pretty hard, got some easy looks, made some threes. But there was purpose with our offense with a little bit of discipline. And, um, you know, that, that was good to see. Again, Wake Forest coming off of a big win. They've got a lot of sophomores like us. Sometimes you don't know how they'll respond on the road. So they, uh, I think they're a better ball club than they show. But I was pleased with the way our guys shared the ball and um, took care of it. That turnover margin, I'm going to have to get on our green machine at the end. That's what we call our, our walk-on group of those guys who came in and they bumped up. We have enough trouble with our turnover numbers and they bumped that up at the end. So, But I felt good how we handled the ball. And I think that uh, that's obviously important for us. Uh, hey Tony, over here. Um, when did you know for sure that Joe was going to be able to play? And you know, what did you think of his performance tonight? Yeah, it pretty smooth out there. Yeah, for sure. He um, he practiced yesterday. Um, that was his only practice. I, you know, he said he felt good, and we um, thought he'd be okay the day before. But he he practiced yesterday. Was good yesterday in practice. Responded well from practice, and then again looked like he didn't miss a beat out there. He had a nice pace about him and didn't seem to get too tired and again um, you know I played him 27 minutes the guys were right in the minutes where nobody was overloaded but uh, it was good to see him out there I, again I I said you know we, we played well at Florida State without him but he's so important and I think um, had he played in that game we just would have been that much better and so having him tonight was big for us Tony uh uh, let's see, it's uh, 26 field goals, 17 assists. I imagine you're pretty happy with that percentage. What was it tonight that your guys were doing to make the extra pass? Yeah, I mean, they're just, I think they, you know, if you watch the Tennessee game, you saw we were um, we were very impatient and uh, not making the extra pass. Well, we went to Florida State. We realized how we needed to try to play in terms of that, you know, screening well, moving the ball, getting back to what, gives us a chance and I think they tasted some success in practice and then down at Florida State when it was required and then they carried that on and again there's still room to make plays you have to get out and transition you have to do opportunistic things but uh, the foundation of it is, is is good screening good cutting sharing the ball using the dribble when it's there and uh, trying to play to our strengths. Tony you guys got off to such a big start first off uh, Malcolm pretty aggressive going to the basket and was that important considering that they were coming off that that Carolina win to maybe put them in their place a little bit maybe? Yeah, well, I don't know about that. But I, I think it was for us just to, you know, we got off a we, we, couple, like I said, we forced them into some turnovers. They had some some um, careless ones. But, yeah, we got the right kind of shots. In the lane, guys were aggressive. Um, at times, we broke them down. There was a little bit of a variety shot at well. So to get off to that good of a start was important. You always, sometimes those starts, though, I think it was 11-0, those are a little overrated. I, I can't tell you how many times you see, not that you turn it down, but where a team makes that run, but the game usually, a team will kind of claw their way back, and that can be um, not as big a deal. But we, for the most part, I think they cut it to nine at one point, um, but we, we separated and did a good job keeping it that way, and the start was significant. Malcolm's looked a little smoother the last couple games instead of a guy who doesn't look like a guy who missed a year. Talk about his play of late. Yeah, he was good. Um, thought he played well at Florida State for sure, and then uh, well tonight. and. Again, hopefully, you know, that's just from some of the things we're doing to help these guys put them in the right spots. And then also, um, you know, you never know. Maybe maybe this is the point when the guys who have redshirted and sat out of here, they start finding their, their rhythm and their timing a little more. But I'm just very thankful that he's he's out there and he's, he's healthy and he's practicing hard. And, um, you know, we'll just keep going in that direction with him because I think – uh, he's he's there's so many of our guys are important there there isn't one guy that I can say is is not important for our team but he's um you know when he's taking care of the ball and his strength and defensively and he's been leading in practice well it's it's made a difference tony not that you would ever wish an injury on anybody and it's never a good thing but with joe out did some guys maybe realize that they have to kind of own a little bit more of the offense at florida state and is that something that maybe carried over yeah, well, I think we, more than Joe being out at Florida State, I think what happened at Tennessee and how we practiced and, and the direction we went from there was the bigger 
um, story in my mind of why we played better basketball at Florida State. I think Joe just would have been a positive. Uh, we, we made, it's not like we changed what we're doing, but just how we went about it, how we're going to be successful. I think, as I said, we couldn't hide from that. You just, you couldn't. You could have, all those other losses, you could have said, well, it was close, it was just this, it was just that. Well, when that thing's staring in the face like it was uh, against a good team, don't get me wrong, that makes you say, all right, who are we going to become? Are we going to be serious about this? Are we going to do what's got us here to a point where we're, we're competitive, or are we just going to keep doing it how, um, how it looks? And I think that was a turning point for us. And we tried to, again, put guys, you know, give them a little more structure at certain things offensively and um, refocused a little bit defensively and, and, again, with the unselfishness. Hey, Coach, back here. Tennessee was a pretty poor defensive effort. Florida State, a lot better. Obviously, this game, uh, it's Wake Forest wasn't even getting good looks. Is that just a matter of practicing more? Did you run them? Is it more discipline? Uh, what, um, go, what goes into making them better defensively? Because they were excellent tonight. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's it, great defense, good defense, whatever you want to call it, doesn't guarantee you're going to win. But without it, we don't have much of a chance. So it's coming to the realization that, that that's our bedrock to start with. Um, trying to take care of the ball is another one. And, and then, you know, trying to, as we said, be a little more patient and wear people down. Those three things went from, I said, forget about trying to win games. Let's just start with those three things and stop losing. Because we're losing because we're not getting back. We're not guarding the right way. We're turning the ball over. We're shooting shots that aren't, aren't for us. And so when they understood that, um, that's what we really focused in on. And again, you won't win. I'm watching the playoffs and NFL, college football, any sport. If you're not rock solid defensively, it's hard to have a chance. You got to add a bunch of other things. You got to obviously score. You got to do a number of things, but that's where it starts for us. So, um, and we'll be challenged on the road, but that's that's our, our calling card since I've been here. Coach, I was right here in the middle. I was a little curious. Uh, London seemed to be laboring a little bit. Um, in and out with, with, with Ethan in the tunnel and back out on the floor. Just was curious what was going on with him. Yeah, I'll find out. I think he was just trying to keep loose on the bike. Uh, I don't know if he uh, – I'm not sure if he fell or not, but we'll, we'll find out. But he was ready to go, come back in the game if needed. But I thought um, with the lead and the way the game was going, we'll just get some of the other guys some quality minutes and, and give him the rest. We've got obviously some games in a short amount of time. Tony, uh, some shots that have dropped for Toby in the past seem to be rimming out, and bouncing. Out. Is he pressing a little bit offensively right now? Yeah, I don't know if he's pressing. Um, I just I, I want him. Yeah, he's three for eleven. Um, he got pretty good looks. I don't maybe one, he maybe force, but um, he's just got to keep coming. He's young. He is, and he's 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 kind of you're seeing the the maturation process before your eyes with Mike. Sometimes he looks good, sometimes not. But yeah, he's just got to keep playing with a motor and being better defensively, better on the glass, keep trying to get him the, the ball in the right spots. And um, yeah, he didn't look like he had the, the energy or didn't look like he had his legs a little bit today. But um, you know, like I said, he'll, uh, he'll be an important part of what we're trying to do. But he's got to bring it next time out. Tony, uh, you, you did one of those Saturday, Monday swings during non-conference play. Now you're going to do it two games on the road. Will you do anything differently these next few days to get ready for that? I, yeah. I, know, I think you're staying in North Carolina, right? Yeah. I mean, it's that's my Pac-10 days. You know, when I was there, that's all we did is you'd go and you'd play Thursday, Saturday. And um, so at least I've got experience doing that. Um, didn't always have success, but uh, but going on the road and doing it. Um, who, who do we do it in the non-conference? I'm trying to remember. Northern Iowa? Northern Iowa. Okay, those are our last two, both at home. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll stay down there. And um, again, that's the, I guess the, with ACC getting big Monday, you know, that's the deal. Usually you don't play two ACC games this close, but uh, how you handle that, how you play certainly on Saturday, and then how you handle it's always a, you always got to think a little bit about how you handle that day in between. And that's, um, I've done it differently when I was at, for the, the years I was at Washington State, you know, whether you go hard, whether it's more of a walkthrough, what you're preparing for. So we'll have to see how the game goes Saturday, but we are going to stay down there and, um, and hopefully have two really High quality games. Thanks. Yep.